Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'll show you how to route the inner channels of the pen cases. But before we get into all those details about the setup, let's go to the computer and I'll tell you what's happening in July and August. If you've been to my website recently, you would have noticed that I added two new artisan markets. The first one is the Muskoka Arts and Crafts, and that is happening actually next week, July 15th through 17th, so Friday through a Sunday uh, venture. It is happening in the town of Bracebridge, which is about three and a half hours away by car from where I am. Now, this is my first time doing this particular artisan market, and I'm naturally a little bit nervous and excited at the same time. So thoughts like, am I going to get there on time? Am I going to set in things properly? Am I going to forget something? Are all running through my head. So I'm making a list and checking it twice. It is happening at the Ann Williams Memorial Park and the address is 50 Santa's Village Road. <laughs> so Christmas in July. The second uh, artisan market is River Fest de Laura, and that is happening on August 19th through 21st. Again, a Friday through a Sunday uh, venture. Uh, I have been doing River Fest for about four years now, not including the two COVID years that we had for the past two years. And I really like it. This is my favorite um, summer festival, summer music festival. And this year, the headliners for each day are Alicia Cara, The Glorious Sons, and Mother Mother, so all good times. Uh, it is happening at Bissell Park in the village of Elora, which is about half an hour from where I am. Now that we know what's happening in July and August, let us go to back to the main setup. Uh, I'm going to attach my phone camera to myself, and that way you're going to get a good first-person view of everything that is going on otherwise my hands will get in the way and you won't be able to see anything so this is okay so this is the setup this is my main router fence and it is set away from the router bit so that regardless of the height of the router bit the hinge holes are not affected that means i should always butt the hinge side of the case against the router fence uh, I also have a front-facing uh, fence, and that is to prevent the workpiece from flying away towards me and getting damaged in the process. There is a minor gap, which is equivalent to one business card width, and that is to facilitate the movement back and forth, or in this case left and right, and also expand the channel just a little bit to prevent the router bit from overheating. These are the so-called Jorgensen's clamps or hand screws, depending on which side of the world you are, and they're positioned on either side of the bit. And that gives me a start and stop position so that I, I don't route beyond the edges of my pen case. I also have fake stops right here, which are the width of a veneer. And that is because I'm going to be using a slightly older router bit to do majority of the wood removal. And then I'm going to use a fresh bit, remove the fake stops, and then have one clean final pass. I am going to have about 75 pen cases or 150 of those sides to do. So that's going to be a lot of work and that's why I decided to opt for a um, older bit and then have one final pass with a fresh bit. Now that we know about the setup, let's go and see what the technique looks like. As the bit is spinning, I am going to start from the middle of the pen case and with a left moving action plunge it all the way down to the base, to the router table. Then I'm going to move left, and when I hit the fake stop, I'm going to immediately move back and proceed to the other end. And when I hit the fake stop here, I'm going to immediately move it away as well. And this immediate moving away is to prevent the router bit from staying in one place for too long. Otherwise, it creates a little scotch marks along the curve right here, which are really hard to get rid of. And that's why I have the fake stops. And then finally, I'm going to have that fresh bit to have one nice, clean cut. Now that we know the technique, let's do some routing. 
As I mentioned, I am going to have to make 75 pen cases, 150 of those sides, and that's going to get pretty repetitive and pretty boring. So what I'm going to do is use real time to do two passes per case for those. So these are brand new, uh, un un uh, unrouted. So this is going to be the beginning of the process. And after that, it's a whole repetition. So let me put on my safety gear and begin routing. I'm also going to clean the surface uh, where I'm going to work so that I don't have to worry about anything else aside from routing the right parts. Now I'll go behind. And as you can see, uh, the whole setup has been designed with safety in mind. That way the workpiece is only moving within this particular area and not towards me and the router bit is not exposed to my fingers in any way, shape or form. That way, no damages to fingers or any other body parts. So, I'm going to put on my safety gear and in the post-processing, I'll try and adjust the volume of the, uh, of the whole uh, routing scene because it's going to be a little bit louder than usual. But you can also lower down the volume if you wish.
and this is the entire process so I gradually lift up the router bit to my height and I usually do about a millimeter at a time now for the demonstration purposes I was a little bit more adventurous and I think I did two millimeters and as we can see right here this is let me just focus it come on I can focus this is one of the scorch marks I was referring to a little bit earlier on. Uh, so as I keep raising the bit and then finally I use the final fresh bit that would technically disappear. So I have to do now 150 of those uh, and that's gonna be for <laughs> days on end. But in the meantime, if you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also, follow me on all social media channels, consider supporting me on Patreon and definitely support me for the Great Psycho Challenge when I, where I raise funds for uh, kids' cancer. All the links are down in the description. Now, several hours have passed and I've made really good progress and I'm at the point where I need to do the final pass on the one remaining maple and one remaining cherry pen cases and I figured I'm gonna include that as a bonus footage. Of course, for the first person view, I need to insert my phone into my coveralls. There we go, just like that. And let's inspect the pen cases up close and personal. Starting with the maple, and let me see if I can focus it properly. Uh, it looks pretty good. We don't have that many scorch marks to worry about. And inspecting the cherry pen case, uh, we do see a few, one right here, and the other one is right here. Let me just turn it around there. So pretty much in the same corner. So with the final pass and a fresh bit, these are all supposed to disappear. So let's see the theory into practice. Of course, safety first.
And there you have it, the scorch mark that we saw right here on both sides is completely gone. And that is pretty much it. Uh, now the final step of the project is sanding and that is quite the boring activity so probably I'm not gonna film that. Uh, we will be back for the final step which is doing the fractal burning pattern but that's gonna be after my show in Muskoka. So, uh, once again, if you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also, follow me on all social media channels, consider supporting me on Patreon and definitely support me on the Great Psycho Challenge where I raise funds for kids' cancer. All the links down in the description.